well, I'm Snowy White, and uh, uh, I brought my old guitar along, as you see. Um, and old is the word, 57 Les Paul. I've had it for 45 years. And uh, it's basically played on everything I've done and been everywhere with me. Um, it's my main squeeze. It, in fact, for about 30 years, it was the only guitar I've had. So it's um, been played every day for 30 years and most days after that. Um, and uh, in the old days, I never used to let this guitar out of my sight. It's been to fantastic restaurants and it's been to some real diving clubs, you know, clubs where you, I'd hide it under the seat or something and try and remember that it was there the next day. And uh, it's been in the deserts of North Africa and the snows of uh, Upper Finland and all around the world loads of times with uh, Pink Floyd and Thin Lizzy and Roger Waters and all my solo stuff. And so it's been, it's, my career is completely wrapped up in this uh, Les Paul. Uh, it, uh, it fell into my lap, this guitar, actually. I was in Sweden. Um, I went to Sweden when I was 18 because, well, actually, because of a Swedish girl, funnily enough, as you do, you know. You know the thing, don't you? <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was in a band, and I had a Strat, and I didn't really like it, and I always wanted a Les Paul, and the drummer had a friend who, who had this uh, Les Paul under his bed for, since it was new, I think, and he'd never played it. So uh, I said, can I, can I have a look at it? So he brought it along to, uh, to the rehearsal and I swapped him. I gave him my Strat and he, he gave me this Les Paul. And uh, it sort of fell into my lap. As soon as I picked it up, I went, oh, that feels really good. Yeah, I'll take it. And that's it. It found me in 1969, really. It looks a bit battered, but I tell you what, it's a 57, so it's pretty old. The neck is as straight as a die. It stays perfectly in tune, and it sings on every fret. It's absolutely marvellous. And I'm pretty sad to see it go, but um, I don't really play it now. Uh, so it, I think it's time to, uh, to move on, and I just hope it goes to a good home. <sighs> What's after this? I have no idea what to do next. I do a lot of oil painting, and I'm, I'm recording a new album. I don't, I'm not stopping playing, but I'm probably stopping live gigs at the moment, because um, I've got quite a lot of uh, RSI in this elbow, and it hurts a lot. And I've, I haven't picked up a guitar since last October, for about a year. I've only done five gigs at Ronnie Scott's in London, no, sorry, five songs at one gig in Ronnie Scott's in London since last October, because this has been so bad. And it, it's still there, and I, I won't, if I pick up a guitar, I'll pick up the one that's, you know, in the front room or in the studio. I don't pick up this one, which is, you know, somewhere safe. So I'm, I'm not really going to play this one again, because I would take it if I was doing live work. Um, so I'm afraid it has to go, and I, it's a bit of a weird feeling, because in the past, for years, it's, when I've travelled, it's always been under my hotel bed. And with Roger, it wasn't. It was looked after in a special way by the crew. But last night, it was under my hotel bed here in Dallas again. And I'm lying on the bed thinking, my guitar's under my bed. It's like a full circle. It's come right round, you know. But it is time. I'm really sad, but I'm really determined that it's time to go. We, time we've parted company. And, uh, but after, after the guitar's gone, I have no idea. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you for listening to us. We appreciate it.